Welcome back to Iowa Live, and we are talking about the arts, Jackie. Absolutely, continuing to celebrate and support Iowa arts here, especially on a local front, as the Des Moines Playhouse continues to do in such an incredible way, over 100 years of being in our community and continuing to go strong, including a, a very uh, big production that they're getting ready to open this weekend, The Diary of Anne Frank. I think you hear that title, and everybody has it's some... Powerful, yeah. It's powerful, yeah. Everyone has some yeah. sort of reaction mm -hmm. to that. So we want to talk about it, how this is a new adaptation, and why this this is a show you don't want to miss. So we wanted to bring in a performer who's a part of it right now in tech rehearsal, getting ready to yeah. open this weekend. That's Greg <laughs> Bloomhagen, uh, who plays Otto, Otto Frank. Correct. So thank you for being here. You're and of course, you. you can't talk about the Des Moines Playhouse without mentioning the executive director, David right. Kilpatrick, who is also joining us this Good morning. morning. So thank you for being here. My pleasure, thank you. Um, so let's, let's actually start with you, David. Sure. Why this production uh, and why now? Well, interestingly enough, although there's a lot of things going on presently that's making the news right now, we picked this play a year and a half ago. You did? Yeah, we, yeah, our season, so it just becomes almost coincidental or or actually what it shows is just the idea that some things never change. Mm -hmm. And a year and a half later, there's still things that are surrounding this subject matter that make people um, anxious or nervous or, or just excited or something. I mean, there's just, it's it's present. A combination of all yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And so it just turned out, we also as the Playhouse think that it's important to explore classic literature mm -hmm. and the classic stories. And this is a story that's been around for 70 years. And so we just want to make sure that we get a chance to share it with our audiences and with the entire community of Des Moines. Absolutely. A title, a story that many people might, are, I'm sure, are familiar with, <laughs> right. or at least the subject matter, but new adaptation. Can you explain that a little bit and how, what we're going to see on stage? Yes. Well, one of the things, of course, is that when Otto had the, the diary, then there were certain things that might have been said in the diary that perhaps he did not want revealed. And so he, when he released the diary, then those edits were there. But when he passed, then the complete diary was revealed and released. And there's a couple of aspects of the diary that perhaps our, our 2019 audiences won't mind so much. The idea of I'm going through puberty, for example, what is that yeah, like? Yeah, well, yeah. that would be something Otto would not want to discuss. Wouldn't want to touch right. that, yeah. But nowadays we can and explore what's it like to have your body evolve when you are confined in an environment and you can't share with anybody. Who could she ask? She had no best friend or anything that she could talk to. This is questions that are explored in the book and explored in the script. Yeah, wow. reality of yes. the situation yes. that was at hand. So Greg, uh, it, it, this is a, a, a story I think so many are familiar with, but right. if you were gonna kind of put a synopsis to it, uh, what would you say about this story and why people need to come see it? Well, I, I think that, um, um, you know, you're right, a lot of people are familiar with the story, so there's no surprise ending with it, but I think the surprises come along the way in getting to know the characters, getting to know the people involved, and you get you get led in uh, by Anne's words, by Anne's uh, story uh, that she presents, it becomes real, it becomes personal, and uh, and that's that's different. I How that's, much of the story did yeah. you, uh, were you aware of before you took the role? Uh, that's a good question, because I remember reading it a long time ago. Right. And, right. and, and so I knew the general story, but I didn't remember all the characters. I didn't remember exactly all the interplay. Uh, it was just kind of a, it just fell into all the other stories, maybe of the general Holocaust uh, idea. Uh, but when, when I got into it and dug into it, um, uh, it became personal for me too. I got to know the people in the cast as, as their own, you know, themselves, but also uh, it kind of transformed into knowing the, the actual people as we became, uh, as I became Otto and, and my wife. And how and did daughter. that affect you? Well, it's very difficult if you think about it. If that's you allow yourself to think about it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if you allow yourself to think about it, um, it's, it's very difficult because uh, we know the ending. Um, and um, so, um, yeah, it's difficult. I think, I think Greg's being a little humble here, so I just want to jump in for ah. just a moment. <laughs> is that, of course, the story is this group of eight individuals that are attempting to escape um, from Nazi Germany, right. and they're doing it by hiding, and they're confined in this tiny little space, and, and they're having to deal with it in the course of the play is these two years, the last two years of their lives before they're captured by the Nazis, and then they're marched off, and unfortunately, as, as Greg said, they do die. And we know that. Um, Greg happens to be playing the father who's trying to be the, the bastion of, of sensibilityness and trying to be human and trying to keep everybody together while there's some real tension that you can imagine being confined eight people 
people in a very small little space that you barely know. And and, and you know, in a part of the story is what you're trying to avoid. Exactly. Right. Yes. It, but being together for that length of time, a new family, a new community is, is created and you have to continue on. You That's have right. to continue to live. So I think people might also be surprised at the fun moments, the humor yes. that yeah. comes out of the story that uh, even though we know the ending, mm -hmm. you're going to have fun watching this story as well. And one of the things we talk about in the world of theater is just because we, the audience, may know the ending, the characters on stage don't know the ending. Yeah. They've never read the script. <laughs> so they're experiencing it for the first time. And so there is joy and there is realization that life will continue up until it doesn't. And that shows you the talent level too, right. doesn't yeah. it? Well, and, it, and the commitment of the group. I mean, this is a group that itself has formed its own little family yeah. of work and stress and strain of telling a story that's not an easy story to tell. Absolutely. And we were watching some B-roll there of some rehearsals as they're getting into tech rehearsal, getting ready for performance start, starting this weekend. Mm -hmm. And you said there was such a passion behind this production, like everyone right. jumped on to make sure it was the best possible uh, product that they could put forward starting this weekend. Absolutely. I mean, it's just from our set designer to our customer to our painter. You know, even yesterday we had a group of volunteers who were looking and says, well, that door behind that door, if you sit in this one seat, <laughs> you'll see the walls not painted exactly aged like every other wall. And then we did say to them, if we've got that person and he spots that, we've lost them long <laughs> before we got looking for something else. Yeah. But it was it was that attention to detail that yeah. mattered. And that's the part I want to celebrate from everybody involved in this production. Yeah, absolutely. Always incredible volunteers and yes. crew. That's a part of what the Des Moines Playhouse is all about. Okay, so you open this weekend. Yes, we do. Getting ready to tell this incredible story. Uh, David, how do we get mm -hmm. tickets? Uh, you can go to dmplayhouse.com or of course you can give the box office a call. We're open noon to six. Um, we only are running three weeks though so right. it's, a, it's okay. a shorter run it's not like our usual long musical so they want to go ahead and make their ticket reservation early don't right. wait and think oh should i go or I not go time. yeah Just go. absolutely dmplayhouse.com as you see there will give you all the information and continue to celebrate a, a wonderful uh, continued season ahead and more wonderful things on the horizon for des moines playhouse opening this friday and as uh, david said only running three weekends get your tickets stop by the box office say hello to uh, the wonderful staff there or just go online i see you have school matinees uh, that are, are going to be performed as well. Is there anything changed in the school matinees as opposed to the, uh, the regular performance? There might be one word or two that we've yeah. said to ourselves, let's uh, help the teachers avoid problems. Right. Okay. Um, but those are not words that we would change for the public okay. because we know parents are making the choices that they're making and we support the parents. Okay. And, and that, that being right. said, is this appropriate for everyone to come see this? Should everyone come see this story or what is your recommendation? Uh, and my thinking mm -hmm. and thought is, is if you're under 10, you may not understand all the tension and so it may not be as entertaining, okay. but I think 10 year olds and older, it's a valuable story and they get to see a 14 year old um, on stage who is 14 and she is lovely and yeah. just a joy to watch. I've heard incredible things. Yeah. Okay, so get your tickets. Uh, Diary of Anne Frank, an incredible story, a new adaptation of a timeless uh, story that we all need to hear again and again. Thank you both for joining us today. DMPlayhouse.com to get your ticket information. You're watching